Hey, what's up? If you think about it, a freshly fried, still warm Krispy Kreme donut is essentially drugs. It makes you feel very, very good for a short period of time and also like a little bit scared and like you might be in danger. Oh my God. To me, Krispy Kremes are like the gold standard of a yeasted glazed donut and are one of the best things that you can taste with a human mouth. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a DIY variant of that donut that is just as craveable and just as drugs. To get started, I'll grab my stand mixer and in the bowl of that, I'll measure 10 grams of instant yeast, then 350 grams of warm whole milk that I scalded. I used to skip this step because I was convinced that the only reason for doing it was to deactivate the acid producing bacteria present in the milk. Pasteurization takes care of that, so that step isn't even necessary. But it turns out that heating the milk over a low simmer denatures the whey proteins in a way that actually can help the development of the gluten in the dough. After the milk's been heated to save some time on cooldown, I'll throw it into the freezer right on top of Lauren's expensive wild blueberries. Behind the milk, I'll add in 100 grams of sugar, two large eggs, 685 grams of all-purpose flour, five grams of salt, and 100 grams of melted but not hot pork lard. In my opinion, lard provides a little bit more of a flavor improvement than the classic vegetable shortening that they use in Krispy Kremes. Now, the dough hook goes on and I'll mix this on low speed for about three minutes or until the dough goes from a sandy, shaggy mess into a sticky, shaggy mess. From there, I'll turn the mixer up to high speed and mix for five to six more minutes. I'll mention that this dough has a ton of enrichment in it. That means sugar, fat, or eggs, basically anything that isn't flour or water, and all those conspire to make the gluten a lot harder to develop. So this one needs a little bit of extra time compared to a leaner dough without so much fat. Also, if you're wondering, hey Bri, can I mix this one by hand? Unfortunately, no. I tried it and I really wanted to show you guys how to make this without a stand mixer, but since this dough is so enriched, it's very sticky and basically impossible to strengthen by hand. After six minutes on high speed, I'll come back to see if this dough has had enough of the gluten inside developed. As you can see, after a firm tug, there's no shearing or tearing, so I'm happy. I'll call that done. From here, I'll flip this dough over into a medium bowl, and before I ferment it, I'll come back and tuck it into a nice, taut, round ball like this. That's a 10 to 2 rounding maneuver to get things tidied up because it really helps the dough stay strong as it gasses up. There we go, now the lid goes on and I'll check back in one hour. When I check back one hour later, you can see that the dough is all gassed up and just about doubled in size. Now, to shape these into donuts, I'm gonna flour my dough, then my board, and then I'll flip it out. Using the flat of my hand and palms, I'm gonna degas this slightly and push it into a nice thick slab. Once I've got it degassed and relatively flat on the deck, I'm gonna grab my rolling pin and start to roll it out. The final shape and size that I'm looking for on this slab is about 18 inches tall by 10 to 12 inches wide, give or take. Once I'm about halfway there, I'll flour the dough one more time and then flip it over so that the bottom doesn't get stuck as I roll this out. Another light dusting of flour and a few more rolls to get this shaped close to where I need it. Now to ensure that we're getting the yield that we need out of this dough, which is about one dozen hot, fresh Donnies, I made a little guide to put over the top. This tells me that I need to move the slab a little bit more out in the corners to get all 12. To make this little parchment guide, I took a regular rip of that paper and then traced the inner side of the largest ring mold that I'm gonna use to cut these donuts in just a second. Feel free to skip the paper move here, just be prepared to have a suboptimal number of donuts. So I'll roll this out on the corners a little bit more so I can get the 12 that I'm looking for. And once I've got a nice flat sheet that's roughly 16 to 18 inches tall and 10 inches wide, I'll grab a landing pad to proof the donuts on. That's just a sheet tray with some parchment on it and I'll give it a quick hit of pan spray or olive oil to make sure that donuts are easily removed once they're proofed up. To cut these donuts, I'm gonna use my largest and smallest ring molds. By the way, this set of molds is pretty cheap and super useful, and I'll link to this set in the description if you want one for yourself. Now, I'm just gonna follow the pattern that I laid out before. That's three across and four down. When I get to the third one in the row, it's a little bit tight and I'll need to press the dough a little bit to stretch it out. I think the sheet snapped back while I move the cameras around. That's not a big deal, that's close enough. And once I've got all 12 of these cut out, I'll remove the scrap. Of course, you could definitely re-roll this scrap into more donuts, but they'll probably be pretty rustico and a touch more chewy because they have been rolled two times. Now with the smallest ring mold, I'll come back and pop out the donut hole in the middle. Feel free to proof and fry these if you guys like small looking donuts. I think donut holes are cool, but I'm not gonna show you how to make them. Once I've got all 12 of these beauties cut out, I'm gonna move them over to the sheet tray that I just sprayed. Doop, 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 doop. 
Now to proof these, I'm gonna wrap them with plastic wrap tightly and then set them off to the side on the counter to proof for 45 minutes to an hour. Or if you wanna do all of the work for these donuts the day before, throw them in the fridge at this point and then fry them first thing the next morning. Now, while those proof, I'm gonna whip up my glaze, but I also need to thank Mudwater for sponsoring this video. Mudwater is a coffee alternative with four different adaptogenic mushrooms and Ayurvedic herbs. Don't get me wrong, I love coffee, but drinking a full calf cold brew at 2 p.m. sounds like a literal nightmare at this stage in my life. Mudwater comes with just a seventh of the caffeine of regular coffee, so I can have a few cups throughout the day without the sweaty, nervous anxiety. Mudwater sent me their starter kit that includes 30 servings in a nice recyclable tin. I also got this USB rechargeable frother and a free sample of their coconut creamer. Since then, Lauren and I have honestly been drinking it so much that we drank all of the free product that they sent and had to reorder not once or twice, but three times that we would actually have enough to show during this video. Lauren goes with an iced latte version usually and I just do a tablespoon mixed with hot water. The combo of cacao, chai, and lion's mane, chaga, and cordyceps mushrooms give this drink a super earthy, robust flavor that's very similar to coffee. So it's an easy swap out if that's your drinkable ritual. So if you wanna give Mudwater a try right now, you'll get 15% off of the starter kit with my code BRIANL. The link's in the description below, that's 15% off. Thank you, Mudwater. Now to make the glaze for these donuts into a medium bowl, I'll combine 750 grams of powdered sugar, or like two bowls worth, then 175 grams of corn syrup. That's not an ingredient I use very often, but the syrup here really helps keep the powdered sugar from crystallizing, and it also helps give us a glaze that we can use on a warm donut. Add Krispy Kreme, they glaze those things pretty much right out of the fryer, and if you've ever done that without corn syrup, you know that the glaze essentially just melts right off. Smart move, Krispy Kreme. Lastly, I'll add in 125 grams of milk and then in goes my whisk and I'll stir this until there's no longer any clumps of powdered sugar. The final viscosity should be very thick because again, this stuff is gonna be hitting a pretty warm donut and it's gonna thin out by quite a bit. Next, I'll cover the glaze with the lid so that it doesn't form a skin and then I'll set up my donut fryer. For that, I'll grab my six and a half quart Dutch oven and drop it down on the stove over medium heat. Into that, I'll add a bunch of Crisco like three quarts worth, and yes, I'm using Crisco. Hey Bri, isn't Crisco like really bad for you? Well, it's not great for you, but neither is sugar. It's what they use at Krispy Kreme though, and frying in it does give an exceptionally clean flavor, much more so than canola or soybean oils. Fellow YouTuber Adam Ragusia actually has a really informative in-depth video on Crisco or hydrogenated oils in general, and I'll link to that below, and you can decide for yourself what exactly you wanna fry in. Some other options would be coconut oil, that's a healthier saturated fat, but it's very expensive to use in large amounts like this, or avocado oil is a mono unsaturated fat that's also very healthy, but very expensive. You get it. Now, once my Crisco is all melted up, I'm gonna grab my donuts and check their proof. As you can see, after about 45 minutes at room temperature, they've gassed up by about 50% and they spring back nicely when I poke them. Okay, to get these ready to fry, I'll grab a wire rack and sheet tray to land these on when they come out of the oil, and I'll also check the temp of that oil. At Krispy Kreme, I'm told they fry around 350 to 360 F, and this is right in the sweet spot. So in goes my first four Donnie's. For a pop this size, I think four is probably the upper limit of what you could comfortably fry at once. In total, I'm gonna be frying these donuts for about two and a half minutes. That's just over one minute per side. After 75 to 90 seconds, I'll come back and check on the bottoms. If they're nicely golden brown like this, I'll decide to give all four of them a flip and make sure to do that away from yourself so you don't splash hot searing Crisco all down your front. Now I'll fry these for another 60 to 90 seconds on the back side, and I'll mention that these are gonna be a little bit darker than the ones at Krispy Kreme. Don't pull them when they're still blonde like the ones from the shop because they're gonna be undercooked and doughy in the middle. After two and a half to three minutes, these are looking deeply golden brown all over, so I'm gonna pull them out and land them on that wire rack. Take a look, they're not oily at all. That means we got the proof right and the oil temperature was in the sweet spot the entire time. It didn't cool down too much. Now, once I've got 12 beautiful, evenly fried naked donuts draining on the wire rack, I'm gonna give them about five more minutes to cool down before I glaze them. By the way, these smell so, 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 so sick, you guys. Now, to glaze these things up properly, I'm gonna grab a medium bowl and cover that with a wire rack. From there, I'll load a donut right into the center and then I'll hit it with an aggressive amount of glaze. Like, so much glaze. 
If this seems excessive, just know that most of it's gonna fall off. And in donut shops, this is what they do to get that signature clean, shiny coating. Plus, doing this over a second bowl allows me to reuse 100% of whatever glaze doesn't stick. Once the main bowl's empty, I'll just switch to the drip bowl and keep on pouring. Now, this glaze is gonna need about 15 minutes or so to set into something that isn't overly sticky. 15 minutes later, once the frosting is set, take a look. This version of a glazed yeasted donut might not have that blimpy round extruder quality that something from Krispy Kreme does, but it's so rich, it's super light, and probably thanks to Crisco and corn syrup, smells exactly like a Krispy Kreme glazed donut. And just as it should, it both provides and scratches some kind of deep itch inside your brain that makes it almost impossible to not eat three or four. I really hope you try making these for yourself sometime soon. And by the way, let me know in the comments what you think. Let's eat this thing.